All right, today we are going to tackle two-step equations. So we've spent a couple days now solving one-step equations where there's just one thing to do to get the variable by itself. And now these equations is going to be two things to do. So if you look at questions like number one, first thing you're always going to want to do is find your variable. So P is right here. Our dividing line, and we kind of stopped drawing it, but just to bring it back for a second, our dividing line is the equal sign. To keep these two sides equal, whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. If we just added something to this side, it's no longer equal to this side. But if we add it to both, then we're still equal on both sides. Now, here's P. We want to get it completely by itself. So we still have the same goal of getting P equals our answer. But the thing is now is we've got this two and we've got this two that are on the same side of the equal sign as our variable. They both have to go. So you're just going to attack each one individually, but there is an order that you have to follow. So we're going to write that right up here at the top. So number one, you're going to eliminate which one? It's always going to be the one that's being added or subtracted, and we're going to call that the lonely number. Lonely. Lonely because it's by itself. There's a number that's always going to be attached to your variable. So if you look at all of these, 5's attached, 15's attached, there's always this extra number being added or subtracted. And that's considered the lonely number because it's by itself, it's not attached to the number. But we can put in parentheses the addition or subtraction. Okay, that's what you're attacking first. Then eliminate the number attached to your variable. And that is always going to be your multiplication or your division. Okay, so we're going to eliminate the one that's lonely, that's by itself first, that's the adding and subtracting. Then we're going to eliminate the one that's attached, and that's either going to be with division or multiplication. We get rid of them the same way we've been practicing, so you already know how to do that. And then once we've got that isolated, we'll have an answer, P equals something, and we're going to show a check and make sure we did get it right. All right, so for number one, the lonely number is the minus two. Well, just like we've been doing, to eliminate a minus two, you're gonna do the opposite. So we're gonna plus two, and as always, you have to do it on both sides, and you need to show it on both sides. When we're doing our addition and subtraction, we have to put that big equals line across to show our step, and we're gonna go straight down. Now, the negative two or the minus two and plus two cancel leaving me P over two. So I still have a P over two. Bring your equal sign down and then add on the other side. Three plus two is five. So I've added two to this side to get five. I added two on this side to eliminate this. That was why I did it in the first place. And now I still have P over two. So I'm not done. That's why there's these are two step equations. I've got one more step to go. I need to now eliminate this two that's attached to the P. So step two, eliminate the number that's attached to the variable. So P is being divided by 2. Something divided by 2 equals 5. So the number is 10. Something divided by 2 is 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So how do we undo division? We multiply. So dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2 cancel each other out. We've got to multiply by 2 on the other side to keep this balanced so both sides are equal. And then that gives me the 10 that I knew was the answer. So P equals 10. At least that's what I think. I need to check it. So again, your check, you're going to take the original equation and you're going to rewrite it, except for the variable becomes your answer and we're going to see if it works. So instead of P over 2, I'm going to put 10 over 2. And then you're going to solve this just one step at a time. So you kind of follow your order of operations over here. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then 5 minus 2 is 3. So the answer to the left side of my equation is 3. And then the right side is also 3, which means my answer is right. My check works, so my answer is right. So number 2, kind of the same idea. When you look at number 2, 
I have x on the left side of the equal sign with a 2 and a 4. So if I want to get x completely by itself, I need to get rid of the 2 and the 4. So you start with the lonely number, which is the 4, being added and subtracted. So since it's a plus 4, now I'm going to minus 4 on both sides. Put your big line underneath. So if you notice on this one, it was a minus 2, so I added. This is a plus 4, so I subtracted. So you need to be consistent. Make sure you're always doing the opposite. These are going to cancel. x over 2 is left over. The 4 is 1 away, but I still have x over 2. And 7 minus 4 is 3. Bring down your equal sign. That needs to be there. All right, so now to get rid of division, I'm going to multiply. Timesing by 2 and dividing by 2 cancel each other out, so I have just x, and 3 times 2 is 6. So I think that's my answer, but I need to check it. Take the original equation, plug 6 in for x. So it's 6 over 2 plus 4 equals 7, one step at a time. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So the one side that's already simplified is just going to stay 7 all the way down. We're not going to move it or do anything. You're just going to follow your order of operations on the left or right side, wherever it's at. Get it down to a final answer and make sure both sides are the same. If they are, then you know you actually got the answer right. x equals 6 is the correct answer. So again, when you take a test on this stuff, if you do all your checks and they all work, then you know you got 100%. So you should definitely know when you hand this test in kind of how you did. There shouldn't be any guesswork there. So we slide down. <clears throat> Number three looks a little different. Okay, This now has multiplication and subtraction, where before we had division and subtraction. But we still follow the same set of rules. We're trying to get x by itself. And we still start with the lonely number. So it looks a little different. But the lonely number is still the added or subtracted number, the 8. x is attached to 5. So 5 is not lonely. We're going to leave that alone. So we've got to get rid of the minus 8 first. So opposite is plus 8. Making sure that we're showing all this work exactly the same. Minus 8, plus 8, that goes away. 12 plus 8 is 20. And what do I have left on the left side? The 8s are gone, so I still have 5x. One more step to go. x is not completely by itself. The 5 is still there. So 5 times some number equals 20. So the answer is 4. How do I show my work? To undo multiplication, I need to divide. We show division on both sides. Multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5 cancels itself out. So you have x, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. Let's check it. Original equation. So 5 times x is now 5 times 4. Minus 8 equals 12. We've got to multiply first, show each step. So all of these checks are going to have three lines. 20 minus 8 is 12. I get 12 on both sides. My answer of x equals 4 is good. Number 4, same idea. So I see v on the left side. There's a 15 and a 43. I'm going to start with the 43. That's the lonely number. It's being added or subtracted. Since it's a minus, I'm going to add 43. It's going to cancel, leaving me 15v on the left side equals, and I'm going to grab my calculator now, 1637 plus 43, and we get 1680. Okay, I still don't have v by itself. That's my final goal, v equals something. So right now I see multiplication, I'm going to divide. 15 times something gives me this, so to think backwards I'm dividing. 15's cancel, so 1680 divided by 15 is 112. Sounds like a really big answer. Let's check it and see if it's right. And you do need to write the word check, so it's really clear. Here's my check, here's my work. Otherwise, it just ends up looking like a bunch of numbers. So rewrite the original. 15 times V is now 15 times 112. Fifteen times one twelve is sixteen eighty. 
and you're going to see that number show up again. And now I'm going to subtract 43, and I get 1637 on both sides. Check works, answer's good. All right, so what happens now when I see all these decimals? That looks difficult. Well, it's not. It's the same thing. Okay, we can't do as much mental math maybe because the numbers aren't numbers that are nice or we're used to using, but we're just going to let the calculator do the work. You have the calculator in this section. We're just going to follow our same rules, and we're still going to get the right answer. So x is on the left side with these two decimals. I'm still going after the lonely number first the added or subtracted. So to start, I'm minusing 3.6 from both sides of my equation. If you still need the dotted line to remember what that means, equal sign, both sides, once on each. So they go away. I still have x over 11.6. That hasn't gone away yet. I haven't done anything with that. And now I need to subtract. So I'm going to grab my calculator. 3.6. 325 minus 3.6. And I get a negative. I need to make sure I bring that down. Equals negative 0 0.275. All right. I don't love the way this looks, right? Nasty decimals, negatives. But if I keep following my rules, I'm still going to get the right answer. So I want to get x by itself. I see division. So I want to undo it. So I'm going to multiply by 11.6 on both sides, which will eliminate it on the left, leaving me just x. And now on this side, I'm going to take the negative 0.275 that's already in my calculator, and I'm going to multiply it by 11.6. And that's going to give me my final answer. So it's negative 3.19. We're not going to show checks on the decimals ones, okay? You can on the test to check your answer, but I'm not going to force you. It just becomes a little tedious. If you know how to do a check here, I trust that you could do a check here if you wanted to, if you had to, but for now, we're not going to do checks on the decimals, okay? So number six, all of a sudden my variable's on the right side, so it's a little different, and I've got these variables. So the P is over here. Here's my dividing line. So I need to get rid of the 1.8 and the 4.1 so that P is by itself. So the P is going to be on the right side by itself. So my two options are the 4.1 and the 1.8. The lonely number is over here, plus 4.1. So always get rid of addition or subtraction first. So I'm minusing 4.1. Now where do you also multiply 4.1? It's on the other side of the equal sign. Okay. So don't put it under the 1.8. Once on the right of the equal sign, once on the left. So this will cancel, which is what I wanted. I still have 1.8p. Subtract on this side. So 16.7 minus 4.1. So I have 12.6. Now to finish this off, I see multiplication. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to divide. That's going to cancel it. Divide on both sides to get my answer. So the 12.6, I'm going to divide by 1.8 at 7. And we're not doing a check. Okay, so on your homework and on your classwork, you do not need to show a check for the decimal questions. Everything else, show a check. And again, you could show a check. It's not that you can't. If you want to check your answer, perfectly fine, but it will not be required for your credit. So you need to try these two bottom questions. Show all your work. Show your checks. And when we see your work and your checks all done correctly, then you can flip it over and get to your classwork.